Economics is in many ways about choices. To get one thing we like, we often have to give up something else that we like. There's no such thing as a free lunch. In this lecture, I'm going to introduce three important concepts that underpin rational decision-making in economics. Opportunity costs, marginal benefits, and marginal costs. We'll then put these together into the when to stop rule. If we want to make rational choices between two options, we might compare their costs and benefits. But the costs of some options may not be as obvious as they appear. For example, the cost of going to university is not just the tuition that you're paying, it's the time and salary you give up when you could have been working at a job. The opportunity cost of a particular choice is the best alternative that you need to give up to make that choice. So, What's the opportunity cost of watching this video? Well, what was your next best choice? What would you have been doing instead if you weren't watching it? Maybe you would have been watching old episodes of Game of Thrones. If that's so, then that's the opportunity cost. Or another example, what's the opportunity cost of clearing land in the Amazon for farming? If a farmer cuts down some forest to raise cattle, and if the lost wildlife habitat, water purification, and climate regulation would have been the next best use of the land, then the value of that wildlife habitat, water purification, and climate regulation is the opportunity cost of the expanded farmland. Decisions in life are rarely black and white, and the framework that mainstream economics uses to explore decision-making is centered on the idea of rational choices. Now, people do not always act rationally, and that's a topic we can discuss in another lecture. But for now, let's pretend they do, and there's a lot of this in economics. Economists use the term marginal changes to describe small incremental adjustments to an existing plan of action. And rational individuals, if such people truly exist, make decisions by thinking at the margin, i.e. by comparing marginal benefits and marginal costs. So small incremental benefits and small incremental costs. At dinner time, the decision isn't between fasting or eating like a pig, but whether to have an extra spoonful of mashed potatoes. And when exams roll around, the decision is not between blowing them off completely, I hope, or studying 24 hours a day, but whether to spend an extra hour revising versus watching TV. Maybe that was the opportunity cost. Now, the first hour that you spend studying might have a tremendous benefit in terms of the extra marks you would get from that hour of studying. But each additional hour that you spend studying is going to give you less of a benefit. Now the total points you're going to gain through studying, if you're interested, is actually the area under this curve. And importantly, every additional hour that you spend studying is also going to have a cost, maybe in terms of the sleep that you miss. And the total marks that you're going to lose uh, for every hour of studying is actually the area under this curve. And what you really want to do is balance these two factors, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But before we do that, let's explore marginal benefits and marginal costs in a bit more detail, as these are quite important concepts in economics. So the marginal benefit, also known as marginal utility, is the extra pleasure or satisfaction you get from consuming one more unit of a good or service. And an important concept is the law of diminishing marginal utility. The more you have of something, the less satisfaction an additional unit provides. The first piece of cake on an empty stomach offers considerable satisfaction, but each additional slice is going to give less satisfaction than the previous one. And again, it's important to distinguish here between marginal benefit, which is going down probably to zero after the fifth slice of cake, and total benefit, which continues to go up, but less and less with each additional slice of cake. Marginal cost, on the other hand, is the additional cost of producing one more unit of a good or service. And the law of increasing marginal cost tells us that as you produce more of a particular product, you have to use resources that are of lower quality or are more expensive. 
For example, the use of fertilizer improves crop production on farms and in gardens, but at some point adding more and more fertilizer improves the yield less and less per unit of fertilizer. Or if you view it another way, to get the same increase in yield, we're going to have to add more and more fertilizer, hence increasing costs. Another example is adding more workers to a job, such as cooks in a kitchen. Now the first cook is great, but at some point you just have too many cooks in the kitchen. The marginal cost increases with each additional cook that you hire, and the total cost eventually goes through the roof. In general, adding more workers can cause problems, such as them getting in each other's way, or they may find themselves waiting for access to equipment. And in all of these processes, producing one more unit of output per unit of time will eventually cost increasingly more, due to inputs being used less and less effectively. Neoclassical economics is constantly comparing increasing marginal costs with decreasing marginal benefits and looking for the optimal scale of a given activity. To return to our earlier example, how many hours do you study for the exam? Well, the first hour may have had a huge benefit for your mark, but there is less additional benefit for every additional hour. And at the same time, each additional hour you spend studying comes at a cost. You might not be getting enough sleep and actually do worse on the exam. The optimal number of hours to study is where the marginal benefit and marginal cost curve intersect. This is the biggest bang for your buck. Before this point, each additional hour is increasing your mark more than it's hurting your mark. Uh, marginal benefits are, are higher than marginal costs. But after this point, each additional hour is actually hurting you. Marginal benefits are less than marginal costs. The optimal number of hours is where these two lines intersect. This is the point where total value hits a maximum. And in our example, it's the number of hours of studying that would give you the highest mark. That's the point where you want to stop.